So what is circulatory shock? Circulatory shock is defined as a syndrome of inadequate tissue perfusion due to problems in the circulatory system. A syndrome means it is a collection of various signs and symptoms. So the tissue perfusion is not adequate. In simple words, we can say that blood pressure falls so low that adequate blood flow to the tissues can no longer be maintained. So in the last video, we discussed about hypovolemic shock, which is due to blood loss or plasma loss. Here we're discussing the other type of shocks, distributive shock, cardiogenic shock, and obstructive shock. So distributive shock, also known as low resistance or vasogenic shock, or warm shock. Distribution is abnormal. Distribution of what? Abnormal distribution of blood flow in the capillaries due to which the blood is not able to reach the tissues. So there's a lot of blood. Blood is in plenty, but the vessels undergo massive sudden vasodilatation. So relatively the blood is less in the vessels because the vessels have increased their size. So either it is widening of the lumen of the blood vessels or the blood vessels undergo massive sudden vasodilatation. And this type results in reduction of venous return, reduction of blood pressure, reduction of stroke volume, reduced cardiac output and impaired tissue perfusion. Also known as warm shock because when you touch the body of the person, it will be warm. Because the skin blood flow increases due to cutaneous vasodilatation and the skin feels warm. So this is just a pun to remember that what exactly happens in the distributive shock. Like hypovolemic, the name suggests hypo less volume, so less blood volume. So you can easily remember. Distributive shock, how to remember this one. So distribution, abnormal distribution. We all human beings, let us suppose we all stay in a state of shock emotional shock okay even though we have the basic needs of life food water shelter clothing whatever we need we have but still we are in shock because of our wants and desires similarly the blood vessels what they want okay blood vessels have enough of the blood in them but still they undergo vasodilatation and they feel that they have less blood and the person is in shock Okay, so the distribution, abnormal distribution of the blood flow in the capillaries, that is the underlying mechanism here. Okay, so of course this is a pun. Now types of distributive shock, it can be syncope. Syncope means reduction in the cerebral blood flow and the person suddenly faints. This one is known as neurogenic shock. Then we have anaphylactic shock because of antigen antibody reaction. Or we have septic shock because of the infection by various microorganisms. So we'll discuss them one by one. Neurogenic shock or the fainting, the person is fainting. Syncope, one and the same thing. So the most common cause is the injury to the spinal cord. This may happen in a case of trauma or while giving anesthesia, spinal anesthesia or deep general anesthesia to the person. So there is some damage to the nerves and this is very difficult to be treated. This is the most common type that you can think of. The person suddenly hearing something, a fainting spell produced because of the strong emotion, some fear, some grief, some sad news. Suddenly there was fall in the peripheral resistance. The vasodilatation was there, venous return decreased, stroke volume decreased, cardiac output decreased, impaired perfusion, Okay, cerebral also received less blood flow and the person suddenly fainted. Carotid sinus syncope. This is also an example of neurogenic one. Okay, so what happens in this carotid sinus? Commonly, this one is seen in elderly more than fifty years of age or atherosclerotic patients. So the carotid baroreceptors becomes extremely sensitive. Okay, so maybe the person is wearing a tight collar or. Uh, some sudden neck movements it can produce carotid sinus syncope carotid sinus will be stimulated because it's very sensitive and the person will faint micturation syncope is an example of situational syncope it can occur situational syncope like swallowing cough reflex while silva okay during defecation or micturation the person can suddenly faint 
So why during micturition? Because this happens in young men and their mechanoreceptors in the urinary bladder suddenly they are triggered. Maybe because of less food intake or alcohol ingestion or they had some recent urinary tract infection or some bladder problem. So the mechanoreceptors are very sensitive. Okay, So sudden vasodilatation may be there because of that and the person will faint. Postural syncope. Postural syncope is associated with getting up from the bed. When you get up from the supine position and you're standing now, so the blood will pool in the dependent parts of the body. There will be sudden drop in blood pressure. The person will feel lightheadedness or blurred vision, weakness in the limbs. And this is generally seen when person is on antihypertensive or antidepressants. Okay, so this one is also known as orthostatic hypotension and if the person faints then it is orthostatic syncope. More seen when the person gets up in the morning or when he has meals after meals or after exercise. So this is more commonly seen. All these are neurogenic type of shock, massive vasodilatation. So they belong to distributive category. Okay, cerebral blood flow will be re reduced. That is why the person is fainting. So they belong to neurogenic type. Another type is septic shock. Okay, distributive shock. One was neurogenic shock. Second is the septic shock. So in this, there are uh, microorganisms are there, gram negative microorganism that stain, do not take up this uh, gram stain, E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Shigella. So all these can cause widespread infection in the body and release of toxins will be there. Those toxins will produce marked vasodilatation. Vasodilatory substances will be released. And as there is infection, so clinically the patient will have high fever in case of septic shock. So we'll just look at the mechanism. Infection by the microorganisms, there will be release of pro-inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-6 in the individual. So what will these cytokines do? What would be the effect on the body? These cytokines will cause vasodilatation, okay? increased capillary permeability, so means blood will ooze out of the capillaries, microemboli, small, small emboli, disseminated intravascular coagulation, big emboli will be formed in the small vessels. Cardiac depression, the myocardium will be depressed because of these cytokines. They will be damaged to the endothelium. And all these things, they will cause poor distribution of the circulating blood volume, resulting in reduced tissue perfusion. Also, the infection by the microorganism activates the CNS and other endocrine systems, due to which there is selective vasoconstriction. Somewhere in the body, vasoconstriction can occur. At other part, there is vasodilatation. So the whole blood flow is maldistributed. Okay? So there will be reduced tissue perfusion. Now, what is anaphylactic shock? That is caused by antigen antibody reaction. Maybe because of some bee sting. Okay, a bee has just stung, or uh, medications can cause this one reaction to certain medications. Or even when you take seafood, some persons are allergic to the seafood. So this results when an individual who is sensitive to the antigen is re-exposed to it. So at the second time, there is a lot of hypersensitivity reaction, the severe one, and the vasodilatory substances will be released. The person can faint. Here, the histamine and histamine-like substances are being released by basophils and mast cells. So because of the vasodilatation, what will happen? Venous return will reduce, stroke volume will be less, cardiac output will be less, impaired tissue perfusion, blood pressure will be less. Now another type, okay, we have discussed hypovolemic shock, distributive shock. Now this is the third one, cardiogenic shock. Cardio, so there is some problem in the heart. The heart is not acting as a proper pump. Why? Why it is not proper? Maybe because of extensive damage to the myocardium in acute MI or in heart failure or in arrhythmias. So there will be back pressure on the lungs and the viscera. So the lungs and the other viscera, liver and all, they'll be full of blood. So this is congested shock. So hypovolemic, cold shock. Distributive, bomb shock. Cardiogenic is also known as congested shock. 
and 70% patient do not survive because the ejection fraction falls too much obstructive shock fourth category hypovolemic distributive cardiogenic obstructive obstructive shock means there will be obstruction to the outflow of the blood as seen in aortic stenosis the blood is not able to go into the aorta so there will be back pressure or there is a massive pulmonary embolus or there is obstruction to the expansion of the heart as seen in cardiac tamponade bleeding into the pericardial cavity so the heart cannot act as a proper pump it cannot expand there is blood outside that is causing pressure to the heart right now what would be the treatment of various types of shock hypovolemic we already said that we tell the patient to be in trendelberg position head is low down to increase the venous return and cardiac output we want to increase and the body should not never be covered in blankets you have to keep the body exposed you'll use the replacement therapy also okay and other types what you would do where are you going to use the sympathomimetics sympathomimetics are drug of choice like norepinephrine epinephrine they are beneficial in neurogenic and anaphylactic shock because in this type of shock we have vasodilatation so we need vasoconstrictors okay so we'll use norepinephrine and epinephrine okay so in anaphylactic shock we'll give this uh, norepinephrine or epinephrine so that there is the vasodilatory effects of histamine are opposed okay and in fact in anaphylactic shock they'll prove to be life saving in neurogenic shock also we give them to restore the full circulatory function okay then other thing is that dopamine is the drug of choice in traumatic and cardiogenic shock why in traumatic shock because we want to improve the renal function they will produce renal vasodilatation and maintain renal function in cardiogenic shock heart is not acting as a proper pump so we want something that increases the cardiac output increases the force of contraction of the heart positive inotropic effect and dopamine is best for this dopamine has a positive inotropic effect okay and treatment with glucocorticoids can be done frequently given in severe shock that will increase the strength of the heart in the late stages any other thing can be done for example if it is septicemic shock or the septic shock then you have to treat the infection infection is causing shock so give antibiotics to the person treat them well if it is cardiogenic shock okay you have to increase the force of contraction if it is obstructive shock then you have to do a surgery to relieve that obstruction so that the blood flow becomes okay so it will depend upon which type of shock it is so thank you very much hope this video was useful to you in the next video we'll discuss the stages of shock how the shock progresses from reversible to the progressive stage to the irreversible or the refractory stage so thank you very much for patient listening